We want to say greetings to everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and as usual, uh, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share. Amen. So we um, thinking about prayer. We've been um, praying every morning with you all, and we're so grateful and honored to be able to uh, pray with you all and to be able to uh, share with you all uh, the things, of course, that the Lord have laid on my heart concerning prayer. And so um, we are going to continue to talk about prayer this morning. And I think, <clears throat> I think that it is very important that people uh, learn to forgive and learn to um, learn to have the right attitude with prayer. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the 11th chapter of the book of Mark. And we're going to just talk about that just real briefly concerning prayer. The 11th chapter of the book of, of Mark. And we're going to read, we're going to start reading at verse 23. So the 11th chapter of the book of Mark, and verse 23, it says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, <clears throat> and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, <clears throat> when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And so that's that now. You've heard me say this before. That's Bible all day long. When you're praying, if you believe that you're going to have what you're saying, uh, and don't doubt in your heart, you'll have it. So many people have passed those tests. Many people come to God in faith. Many people believe I have all the faith that it takes to get what I'm petitioning the Lord about. Many people believe also that they'll have what they say, that they, they really believe that whatever they're praying about, God will grant it. They also believe that they have no doubt in their minds and in their hearts that they're going to receive what it is that they're praying about. So there's no doubt. The faith is there. Uh, and God is there, no doubt is there, the belief is there that they're going to re receive what they're praying about. You can have all those things in line, and you can be at the top pinnacle in, that, in those categories with faith, you know, with pushing out doubt and just believing. You, you can have all of that in line. But look at what verse 25 says, And when ye stand praying, Forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Let me read verse 25 again. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if you have aught. That means anything against anyone. That word aught means any. If you have uh, anything, if you have anything, now I don't think, I think sometimes people think that when it comes to forgiveness, that it has to be some big thing, you know, you've cheated on me, or you cheated with my husband or my wife on me, or you stole from me, or you lied from me. This is saying, if you have anything against any person, anything, it doesn't matter how 
small you think it is. You can you can dislike the way somebody chew their food. That's that's something. You see that? In other words, if you, you can have just anything in your heart towards any individual, you will cancel out your prayer because it means that your relationship with God isn't where it's supposed to be. And so get out of your mind that forgiveness is just for the big things. You can be offended. You can be distraught over anything. It doesn't matter how small it is. That's the reason why we have to be careful about these quote unquote pet peeves that we have. You know that we have our own way of doing things or our own thoughts about something. And then somebody come along that doesn't do something exactly the way we would do it. You see, that that's that's something there. That's something that you could have in your heart towards somebody. You see that? That and so anything, it, it don't have to be something just directly against you. Some people, you know, people walking around with unforgiveness when they weren't even the target for whatever it was, the offense was. Sometimes people just don't forgive people just for being who they are. You don't know somebody might not be where you are, you see, but that who says that you're in line? You see that? So we're not, as believers and, and people in this world, we're not called to, to jump and skate to everybody's tune here. And so sometimes people just need to get over themselves and whatever pet peeves they have. You see that? This Bible says if you have anything against any, why? You know, if you have anything against anybody, that moves into for unforgiveness. It doesn't matter how small you think it is. You might not like the way somebody brushed their teeth. That's something that you have to get over. And if you can't get over it or haven't gotten over it or just pushed it in the back of your mind, you know, it's still unforgiveness there. So it don't have to be something just directly against you for you to forgive it, in other words. And that's what the Lord is wanting us to know today. You see that if you have anything in your heart, you see, here's the problem. When you have something in your heart towards somebody, automatically when you go to the Lord and pray to him about it, doubt is going to be there. You see that doubt is going to be there. And so you can't have anything in your heart anything i don't care what it is i don't that it may not have you may not have been the target it may just be you don't like the way somebody does something that's something that you need to release that's what the lord is telling us don't stand before god praying to him and you can't get over the way somebody does something just because they don't do it the way that you want it done or the way that you would do it that is unforgiveness again somebody don't have to punch you for you to have to forgive them. It don't have to be a direct attack against you. For you to have to forgive them. It could be anything. I don't care what it is. I don't care how small in your mind you think it is. That's enough to hold unforgiveness. You see and many times that's what we think. Forgiveness is just something that you know. Um, we forgive because somebody's done us something wrong. Well, you know, if you take offense to something, you might not like the way somebody vacuum or the way somebody smack their teeth when they chewing gum, whatever, uh, you know, whatever it is. If, if you take offense to it, you need to forgive it. You see, so if it's small enough for you to take offense to it or if it's big enough for you to take offense to it, then it's, it, it's in that category as well that you need to forgive. So you need to know that you need to know that don't don't think it's got to be some big thing and. And the devil got to put on some big show for you to forgive. No, if you take offense to it, you need to forgive for it. You see that. So, verse 25, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Notice that, that word there. It doesn't say sin. It says trespasses. See, so somebody don't have to be sinning against the word of God for you to have to forgive them. It, it could be some kind of way somebody has trespassed against you. You see that? What is trespassing? In, in natural terms, is invading somebody's space. You see? So we all have a space around us. We all have a space around us. All of us, we have our, our distance that we like to keep. 
We all have those things. I, I have a yard. And there are sometimes children may walk in, in my front yard to get somewhere else or whatever the case may be. That's my space. Now, technically, they're trespassing. But I don't mind. That's grass out there. You see that? They're not stepping on me. So you see what I mean there. Now, when you, you trespasses has to do with your lines, has to do with your preference, the lines that you've set. You see that? It, it, it may not have anything to do with the word of God. The word of God don't tell people not to smack when they chewing their food. That, that's your pet peeve. You see that? The word of God don't tell people how to clean and how to vacuum. The word of God don't tell people how to how to brush their teeth. You see that? Uh, uh, and things like that. That's that's your pet peeve. And if you've made that a law unto yourself, then whenever somebody violates your law or your standard, then you are offended. And because of that offense, you have to forgive. You see that? You have to forgive. And that's what the Lord wants you to know this morning. Do not think that it has to be some big old fallout for you to have to forgive. You see that? And that means that person may not even know that you feel that way of the way that you feel concerning certain things. They may not even know that they have trespassed against you some kind of way. But the Lord knows in your heart what's there. And it's important that before you come to him praying that you really check your heart. And listen, don't be too proud and so proud that you can't come to yourself and say, you know what? I do have this against this person. I do feel this way about this person. You better make it right before you come before the Lord. Not only in prayer, but, but, but before on, on judgment day. You come to the Lord and you make it right. You see that? You make it right because I can just about guarantee you that if somebody has trespassed against you, no matter how minute you think it is or they may not even be thinking about it, your attitude towards them change. The way you treat them changes. And God is not pleased with that. That's how you know you need to really forgive. You need to dig down on the inside and forgive. And don't think it's just some small matter. You see that? It's not a small matter. And what you really need to do from that point is check all of these little pet peeves that you have. Check these, these little, what, whatever people are offending you in, check and see whether or not it's really even worth all of that. So I'm telling you, you, people need to get over the fact that other people don't do things the way that they would do them. You see that? Because the fact of the matter is, you don't do things the way other people would do it. So you can't expect people to dance to your tune. People weren't raised the way you were raised. People don't have the same experience that you have. So you need to get over. You, you think more of yourself than what you should. Now, don't get me wrong. We have those things, those things where we do things a certain way, and maybe we would like for people to do things, you know, a certain way, especially if they're around us or whatever the case is. But we can't, we can't put that on people. And God is not pleased with that. And so, what you really need to do after you ask for forgiveness is go and examine what you were offended about. What was it that got on your nerves? And ask the Lord to help you in that area. Don't pray for them. Let the Lord help them. If it's not violating his word, pray and ask the Lord to help you. Why? Because somebody else will come along that don't do things the way you want them done. Somebody else will come along that, you know, will cross your, your, your trespassing line. And you'll be right back in the situation that you were in before. You see, having to ask for forgiveness, walking around upset and mad and snapping at people because you know they're not doing things the way you want and all of that that's that's not god's will you you check you you ask the lord to help you to check yourself you see that amen all right so let's go ahead and um, go before the lord in prayer concerning these things let's so let's bow our heads dear lord we thank you so much today for the word that you've shared with us God, we ask that you will help us. Help us, Lord, to have forgiving hearts. Lord, to forgive from our hearts, not just with our mouths, not just with our minds, 
but help us to forgive from our hearts, Lord. Help us to know that our forgiveness from you depends on our ability to forgive others. And God, also help us to know that we need forgiveness from you as much as others need forgiveness, Lord. Help us not to be high-minded and think we're in a place where we're not. Help us not to be high-minded, Lord, and think that we're better than someone else. Help us to know, Lord, that we've trespassed against others as well. So help us to extend mercy, Lord, to people. Help us, Lord. If there's anything in our hearts, Lord, we pray that you will bring it to our remembrance. Lord, even if we've pushed it way back in our memory somewhere, Lord, help us to think about it, help to bring those things to the forefront of our minds so we can make things right. Help us, Lord, not to think that because we don't think about it every day, or every week, or every month, or every year, that some kind of way is not there. So we ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to reveal those things that we have in our hearts towards others that we may not even remember or may not think about on a regular basis. Also, Lord, help us to remember what it is that we may have in our hearts. God, help us to think about the things that we get offended at. And help us, Lord, not to get offended. Help us not to walk in the spirit of offense. Help us, Lord, to accept people where they are until they grow to where they need to be. Lord, help us not to complain. Help us not to point fingers, Lord, but help us to help people, Lord, to bear their infirmities, to bear their weaknesses, Lord, in love, the same way that you've borne ours in love. Help us, Lord, if we know where a person needs to be spiritually or wherever, God, I pray that you help us to have a mind to be instruments, to be used, to get them to a place where you want them to be and not where we want them to be. We thank you so much, Lord, for your word, for your wisdom. I pray that this soaks down into the hearts of your people, Lord. Help us all to examine where we are in relation to your word. Help us all, Lord, to take the corrective steps, Lord, the proper steps to correct our actions, our mindsets, our attitudes. Lord, help us all to know that this is all a part of our prayer life, that we have to be in right standing with our brothers and sisters for us to be in right standing with you. And we thank you so much, Lord, for loving us enough to correct us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, so we want to say thank you all so much for joining us. We pray that something was said that has been a blessing to you. And we also encourage you to share your prayer requests or your victories and your, your testimonies of how the Lord may be blessing you. Amen. With that being said now, we want to say have a blessed day.